Hello, this is part five of sculpting game assets and the workflow to create them. In the previous episodes, we baked out our textures. And in this episode, we'll be putting those textures together to create our stylized wood. So here are my three textures. I've got ambient occlusion, cavity, and normals. So I'm gonna go across to cycles. So I'll keep a UV image editor up here, but I'll change this one to the node editor and I'll move this across. We don't need the tool panel anymore, so I'll press T to get rid of that. And I can press N to get rid of this panel, so I've got my node editor ready. I'm gonna create a new material down here where the plus sign is, and call this wood plank four. This is the fourth one I've made. I'm gonna give it a C at the end of it to make sure I realize it's in cycles, in case I ever need to go back to Blender Render for any different baking or if a map didn't work. So let's zoom into this and get rid of the diffuse and shift A, shader, principal shader. Shift A is add. And there's the principal shader. I think I've got snapping turned on, as you can see it's snapping around the place, so I can just turn that off here. Shift tab is the shortcut, and hook the principal shader up. In fact, so you can see mine easier, I'm gonna push this up out of the way. We'll be working mainly with the normal map and the color. You can use roughness, but for this tutorial series, I'll probably steer clear of that and then introduce it into the next asset workflow tutorials where we develop our skills further. So shift A again, texture this time, image texture in the middle here. We've got three image textures. So I'm just gonna change this to non-color data as we're only using either the black on the white or the normals, we're not using color. Even though this is going into the color, we're not using the color data at the moment. And shift D to duplicate, I've got ambient occlusion, cavity and shift D for the normals. I'm going to zoom out a touch, extend these so we can see exactly what they are, and bring in my textures. So normals, I always do the cavity in the middle, don't know why, and the ambient occlusion. Okay, so I've got my three textures in, and as hopefully you know, shift A, vector, normal map, to bring the normal map into our principled shader. Okay, so shift A, vector, normal map. Now what we want to do is get rid of our high poly or unsee our high poly, make sure we can't select it and make sure it doesn't render as well. So we can untick each of those. And I've just got wood low poly there. Let's go into render mode, which is shift Z whilst your mouse is over this viewport. And we can see the normal maps working and they don't look too bad, but in order to make our normal maps work well, we ideally need some lights in the scene. So back to normal view with shift Z again. Let's click on our light and make sure it's a cycles light. Use nodes, let's just change it to a sun, nice and simple. It's on 100 strength at the moment, only needs to be on one. And let's point it down towards the piece of wood. Let's zoom in a bit more and go back to render mode with shift Z. There we go, we can see our normal map doing a pretty nice job. You will, on low poly assets, see slight corners like this, depending on your lighting but that's not too bad, that should look pretty good. And there was a few areas I was concerned about, but they seem to be okay at the moment. As soon as we light our scene uh, slightly better, it should look very nice. So let's click back on our wood. I can go to solid mode for that, make sure I've got it selected. You can do it in rendered mode, but it's just a bit tricky to know whether you've clicked on it or not. So, in order to use the node tree successfully, I think it's very important to have the node wrangler add-on enabled. So go up to file, user preferences, add-ons, and you can type in wrangle or node. Make sure that's ticked. And I would say save user settings. So it always appears and then you can close it down. Now, importantly, we can control shift left click and that will show you exactly what that texture looks like on our model. So it sets up a little viewer node. So if I control shift left click on the image texture that's cavity, you can see that's our cavity map and there's our normal map. So I'm control shift clicking. That's very useful. And then if I control shift click on the principal shader, it kind of sets it back to where it was because that's our main shader output. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a mix node. So shift A, color, mix RGB. So that's a mix node, not a mix shader. So this is just for color. And we're gonna have a base color, which is, it's always the bottom one first. That's how Blender thinks. So uh, we'll click on the bottom one and we'll make it a brown color.
color. So let's put that up to full. So that should be fully brown, all going well. Shift, Control, left click, and it's fully brown. If I bring this down, it brings the second color in, which is our secondary color. So it's starting to bring the white in. Okay, so if I bring my color from my ambient occlusion into the top one, like this, nothing happens because it's on one and it's on the brown at the moment. But if I change this mode to multiply, multiply is a blending mode and it will use this information to make areas of the wood, anything in black, darker. So it's a type of blending mode. If you don't understand that, you might want to look up blending modes and tutorials and that. That's not really the scope of this tutorial. You'll get to see what it does and you can follow through, but you might want to look up further because that's quite an in-depth topic. But I'll show you how to use them and you can really just experiment and have a bit of fun to see what the different ones do to come up with different designs. And the more you use them, the more you'll understand them. That's probably the best way to learn in some ways. That's how I learned them. So I'm going to change this one to multiply because we want to use those darker bits of information. And if I now control shift click on the multiply node, you can see the darker bits are coming through. So the ambient occlusion map that we have on there is bringing the dark bits of this texture through and affecting this brown texture here. So let's hook that up to our base color for now and then reset and this is what it's looking like. It looks like a beautiful chocolate log. So let's go back to our multiplier node, control shift left click and let's say we wanted to make some adjustments to how much of this is affecting the brown. Well what you need to do then is bring in a color ramp. Color ramps are really commonly used nodes because they can kind of multiply effects and increase values, which I'll show you now. Let's pull this across, pull this over, Shift A, and this one's under Converter, Color Ramp. You'd think it would be under Color because it's a color ramp, but it's used as a converter. And then you should be able to drop it in onto a noodle and it'll push things across. So let's click on the Multiply node, Control, Shift, Left Click. And then if I bring the blacks up, you should be able to see the dark spots in the wood being brought up. But if you go too far, well, that might be what you want it to look like, certainly stylized. And I'll bring it down, and if I bring the light bits down, that will take away the darkness. Now what's handy is actually if you press Control Shift, left click on this one, you'll be able to see the exact effect it has. So I don't really want to bring the white in because it gets rid of that detail in there but the black could possibly come in a touch, depending on the style you're going for. I'm just gonna leave it there for now so it's ready for us to change later on. So that's the ambient occlusion. And in many ways, it's one you can kind of do without if you've got the cavity map, because the cavity map has both highlights and the shadows within it. It is handy to have the ambient occlusion as well because certain bits go even darker and it does kind of work. But if you have any problems baking the ambient occlusion, which sometimes happens for some reason with ambient occlusion. Uh, don't panic too much, you can just use the cavity. So we need some way of hooking this up. Let's just go back to normal by pressing Control shift left click on our principal shader. So we're back to what it should look like, or is looking like at the moment. And we want to be able to mix this information with this information. So we need another mix RGB. So I could just duplicate this one, but I just wanna remind you where it is. Shift A, color, mix RGB and I'm going to put it in there. Do you notice how that one went to the top? We're actually, this is our base color. This is what we want on color one. So if I put that up to 100%, you can see it's exactly the same as this one. Looking between the two of them because it's 100%. As soon as I bring this down, the white starts coming in. Now you might be thinking, so why is this 100%? But it's a 100% multiply layer. It's a Tiny bit confusing that, and it's kind of difficult to describe, but you'll understand as we go along. So it's 100% of this multiplier layer going through. And we're gonna set this one up to be an overlay. So there's an overlay blending mode here. So multiply darkens, and if you've seen any of my painting tutorials, the opposite to that is screen, which you can see here. So if we wanted to lighten our image with some sort of map, we can go to screen, and that lightens but overlay does multiply and screen together because if I shift control click on this, you can see you've got light bits and dark bits. So the dark bits will be multiplied 
and the lighter bits, can you see the lighter bit on this edge here, that will be lightened. And the gray bits, they'll stay the same. So if I hook this one into the color, which is the top one, then it's kind of working like Photoshop. So this is the so this is like the clipping mask layer or the effect layer that's affecting the layer below. And if I have it all the way up to one, it will have a full effect on the layer below. Let's control shift click on our overlay and see what that looks like. Quite strange at the moment. And of course we can change the effect that it has here. It kind of looks like it's really worn at the edges. That's the great thing about cavity masks. It's that worn area at the edges and it gives it that weathered look. But what we want to do is bring in another color ramp in here so we can affect these different areas. So I could just duplicate this with Shift D, but I'll just show you where it is again. Shift A under Converter Color Ramp and let's drop it in to this noodle here. Okay, so we've got two colors, black and white. So if I bring the blacks up, you can see it's bringing those black areas out and obviously if I bring the whites down and in, it brings more of the white out. And remember you've got control shift click and so you can see exactly what's happening on this. So what we can do, we've got, if I control shift click on the overlay again, we can change this white color to an actual light brown color. If I zoom in a bit, you click on the actual dial or needle or whatever you might want to call these things, where the color is and there's the color down here and you can click on that to change it. So let's go for a nice light brown. Ugh, that's more orangey. I'll bring the tone down. Can you see it there? And slowly bring the tone up. Can you see those weathered bits coming out now? Somewhere around just before that point. Can you see it sort of going over the top in this area here? So we just, we want to avoid that if we can. There we go, about there, possibly. <laughs> we'll see. Now that's not bad, it's doing okay, but it doesn't really look that great in terms of woodiness. It's not bad pretty good and let's look at what it looks like with the normal map as well it's sort of working a bit chocolatey but let's go back to our color ramp and what we can also do is put in extra sort of points or needles or whatever you want to call them so I'll add one in here and I'm gonna adapt this color too far zoomed in adapt that color and make it this is the main color of our wood really and put it somewhere around there let's have a light color we'll put another one in here so make sure that's in there and you can obviously move these around I'll change this one and make that a bit more ready. So you can see which areas it's affecting because this is around the shadow points, it's affecting those shadowy colors in there. So it might be a bit too ready, but we can come down here if we want to. And we can always push these up, push these bits down, depending on the look you want. So I'm gonna click on the end one and press the plus sign. That will add one to the left of it. And on this one, I try not to affect the tone too much because the point it's at is kind of going from dark to light, but I'm just changing the color. So again, that's the tone, that's the sort of darkness. So if I come down with the darkness here, it kind of looks a bit odd. So I'm actually gonna undo that and go in and just change the color. Something around there. I want another one in here, so I'll press the plus sign with that selected. And can you see it's starting to bring the woody color out? I might even go a bit crazy with this one and do something a bit odd in terms of color. You can start to see how you could really stylize your wood now and do something really strange. I'm not sure that works though, but let, we'll try a sort of a slight greeny color in there. And I'm gonna pull this one close to that. Can you see how suddenly the green is really pushed out? But if I pull these further away, it's having interesting effects. And this is where it just needs a bit of experimentation. This seems to be our main color and our main effect. So if I pull this in here, put another one next to it and change this color to sort of ready, you can really see the grain now and it's looking very interesting. So every now and again, it's a good idea to go back to your overlay and see what it's looking like with these colors here. So you can see because it's affecting it in an overlay way, I mean, we could even try mix and see what that looks like and how that affects it. But the overlay should kind of increase and decrease colors. So control left click and see how much you want that overlay to influence as well. You could even change this color so it's a bit lighter base color. And there you can get some really interesting stylized wood. And it is a great deal of 
trial and error and having fun messing about with these sort of colors. Now if you're setting up lots of planks you probably want to copy this whole setup or just copy these color ramps and bring them in so they're all exactly the same. You won't be able to copy the material across because they'll have different cavity, ambient occlusion and normal maps. So let's say we don't want the green look, let's click on that and you can obviously pull them around to see the effect that they're going to have and then click on your overlay and then finally on your principal shader to see what the outcome is going to be. Still a bit chocolatey so maybe we can up the influence of this. This is a very light influence and you can fiddle around all over the place with the colours until you're happy. So at the moment it looks a tiny bit plasticky. I think it's worth putting the roughness to full, then it has that sort of cartoony look. And I'll go through roughness and its properties in later tutorial series. The last thing for us to do then is a bit of lighting. So we can still have the node editor available, but we'll bring down another 3D view so we can see our lights. Still want to be able to see our final wood output. And what I like to do with the lights is a simple three point lighting setup. So I've got this one light pointing down like this. I'll just duplicate that. So Shift D to duplicate, pull it across, rotate by the Z. And so we've got two point lighting, one, two, like that. And lastly, Shift D and some back lighting. So I'll rotate that right around like this and it's coming from the back side. What we could possibly do in this case is rotate it this way as well and point it upwards. That should give a bit of highlight around the edges here and shading possibly. Yeah, I think it works. The last thing I like to do with these lights is just give them a bit of character, so give them a tiny bit of color. So a yellowy one, perhaps a slightly reddy one, and perhaps a slightly bluey one. And you can see the wood's not looking too bad there. Once our lights are fully set up, we can click on our wood and perhaps change the colors very slightly to suit. You can always experiment with different types of overlay as well, if you dare. Surprisingly, I quite like the ad actually. It does often depend what mood I'm in though. <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying these tutorials still. Thanks for all the feedback and comments, I really appreciate those. In the next episode we'll be preparing this now for game engines, which are all fairly similar, so we have the same setup for all of them. We just need to bake out these final textures into two textures, a colour and a normal. So see you next time and thanks for watching.